Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is rebuked by Chief Justice Roberts because he threatened the life of the Supreme Court justices over abortion. We have a legal update, a pro-life update with Brad Dacus of PJI. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York, Democrat, has now been rebuked because he threatened the lives of the Supreme Court justices when talking at a pro-abortion rally on the steps of the Supreme Court. Political reports that Schumer expressed regret last week Thursday over controversial comments he made about two Supreme Court justices. The comments were so controversial that Schumer led Chief Justice John Roberts to issue a rare admonishment, a written statement rebuking the New York Democrat. Schumer was also roundly criticized by others, including some liberal legal scholars because of his outrageous comments the day before. Speaking to activists in front of the Supreme Court building, Schumer called out two new Supreme Court justices by name, Trump appointees, Justice Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, and Schumer said the following, quote, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You don't know what will hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions, end quote. Of course, he's referring to an abortion case that is currently being argued before the court and pro-life justices may scale back some so-called abortion right to kill your child. But the remarks then by Schumer were out of line, even by his own admission, and prompted Chief Justice Roberts to release a rare statement rebuking the minority leader. Roberts said, quote, Justices know that criticism comes with the territory, but threatening statements of this sort from the highest levels of government are not only inappropriate, they are dangerous. All members of the court continue, will continue to do their job without fear or favor from whatever quarter, end quote. So there's Roberts defending, of course, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh. But then Schumer apologized, speaking from the Senate floor, this week, he said, quote, I should not have used the words I used yesterday. They did not come out the way I intended to. I'm from Brooklyn. We use strong language, end quote. Well, I know people from Brooklyn and they don't threaten the lives of Supreme Court justices there, but Schumer later doubled down saying that Republicans were to blame for manufacturing outrage against him, insisting that he was only trying to make a point about Republicans working hand in glove with the courts to undermine abortion's right to kill your child, which is not a right enumerated in the Constitution. But Schumer said he was only referring to the political price that Republicans would pay for having voted to confirm Gorsuch and Kavanaugh to the court. He wasn't actually threatening anybody. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell had none of that. He said, quote, as long as this majority holds the gavel, as long as this majority holds the gavel, we will never let the minority leader's dangerous views become policy. This majority will ensure the only casualties of this recklessness are the reputations of those who engage in it." End quote. McConnell's fellow Republicans also piled on, taking to the Senate floor and social media to harangue Schumer and urge him to apologize President Trump, for example, to, took to Twitter on Wednesday night to criticize Schumer for a direct and dangerous threat against the Supreme Court. Even Speaker Nancy Pelosi kind of took a shot at Chuck Schumer when she said at her press conference, quote, 
I believe he also said his words were not appropriate. And I support him in that, end quote. Well, what does she support? The bad words or the fact that he apologized? Even Nancy Pelosi thinks that Schumer did wrong. The Bible says this in Proverbs 9, do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you, rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that Chuck Schumer would learn from his mistakes and that no Supreme Court justice will be threatened, but ultimately that they will decide to end the abortion Holocaust, even if it costs them their reputation or endangers them. Father, let them do the right thing and prevent the danger from coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. We'll have Brad Dacus from Pacific Justice. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50 and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or write to the address on your screen or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined at Nashville, the NRB convention with a returning fan favorite, Brad Dacus of the Pacific Justice Institute. Christian attorney, Brad Dacus, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Chaps, great, great to be here. So give us a legal update. You guys are fighting the fight in uh, what used to be God's country of California is now turned into the devil's country. Oh boy, has it. I tell you, we, we have so many cases in active litigation right now. Maybe people may not be aware of this, but we have over 40 cases in active litigation. We at the Pacific Justice Institute, we do all of our work with our charge. We do it actually all across the country now. And uh, it's, it's, we're keeping so busy because there's so many things happening now that we just wouldn't, weren't even imagining, say five, 10 years ago. Like for example, a, a, a pastor wants to attend a, a drag queen story hour in a public library in Spokane, Washington. He wasn't gonna protest or anything, was he? Right, he was not gonna protest. He just wanted to go in there to observe and to pray, to be a, a prayer uh, intercessor yeah. for those young children who are being influenced in a hideous way uh, by drag queens. Well, he goes to walk inside a library. He has his Bible. Law enforcement sees him and says, sir, excuse me, um, are, are, you, are you in favor of this? Or what? He goes, oh no, actually, Actually, I'm not in favor of what they're doing. He goes, well, you can't go there. He goes, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I just, I'm just gonna observe. It's open to the public. I'm a member of the public. I just wanna observe. He said, no, no, no. Because of what you believe, your attitude, you, you, can't, you can't go in there. And so he said, well, I, I know what my rights are. and I know you can't exclude me because of, because of my beliefs. And he says, oh yes, you have to go to the other side of the road, uh, the other side of the street, or we're gonna ha handcuff you and arrest you. And he says, I know what my rights are. So they handcuffed him, arrest him, 
put him in the squad car for over three hours. Then they took him to the jail, booked him, and brought criminal charges against him up to a year behind bars. We at Pacific Justice Institute had to step in, represent him. Uh, we did, and the judge dismissed the charges in a 35-page opinion stating that the government cannot treat people differently simply because of their beliefs. Wow. And then, the, get this, you think they learned their lesson. Oh no, the prosecution doubled down. They filed for a motion for reconsideration. The judge said, didn't you read my opinion? No, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm dismissing this. Right. So then they tripled down, if you will, and they have appealed it now. I guess the law enforcement in Spokane really don't have enough criminals to, to, to deal with, but they want to pick on this wonderful, benevolent, loving pastor to try to punish him and silence him just because he wants to be treated fairly like everyone else. And he was already silent. He was just walking into a public library and meaning that was advertised to the public and his crime was holding a Bible. Yeah. They said, oh, you're, you must be one of those Christians. We're gonna arrest you. What happened to the kids? What, did they hear the story from the drag queen? Yeah, unfortunately they did. And unfortunately, this is happening now across the country. This is a part of an organized campaign to inoculate little children uh, to see it as normal and acceptable for men to dress in very flamboyant, very uh, sexually uh, driven uh, outfits uh, to influence young children to think that this is normal. Yeah. And uh, it's most unfortunate. You know, these, these people who are into drag queens, these drag queens, they need the love of Jesus. Uh, they need to be reached out to uh, without a doubt. But we also, at the same time, we cannot forget these little children that are literally being put on the altar of this, this secular God agenda. And, and it's, it's so sad to see that happen. We at Pacific Justice are taking it very seriously. We filed a civil lawsuit now on behalf of this pastor because they also wouldn't let him uh, interview people at another event uh, being put on, even though he had a press badge and they have an actual uh, pu a journal publication called Saved. Uh, they wouldn't yeah. let him interview because he was a Christian. So this is what we're dealing with, and we're going to take this all the way to Supreme Court. There's viewpoint needed. discrimination against Christians, but more more concerning to me is the pedophilia, the recruiting of children and minors into yes. the LGBT lifestyle. Uh, there's other cases like that that you're, you're defending parents. Oh, yes. Uh, for example, uh, we have a case matter in California where they are now able to take children from parents. If the child says that they want to change their gender, they feel like they're a different gender, it's a, it's a, a mental state. Kids are uh, confused these they're days. They're confused and it's exploding, unfortunately in our public schools. It is literally exploding. It's, uh, even in, in Sweden, for example, it's increased 1,500% the number of kids wanting to change their gender. So it's, it's the, the great deceiver is moving and victimizing a lot of kids. Unfortunately, the government is now a participant in encouraging it in a major way. Here we have a case in, in, in Northern California where a 16-year-old girl, she's confused. She goes to a psychiatrist, psychiatrist who works with the government, says, ah, you need to change your gender. In fact, he tells a social worker, a social worker talks to the parents and say, uh, we, will you let your, your daughter uh, have her gender changed? The psychiatrist says she should change her gender. Physically be cut on, injected with hormones, permanently sterilized. Wow. It's, it's sick. And so the parents, Christian family says, absolutely not. God doesn't make mistakes. Our daughter has some, some issues, emotional issues. Um, she needs help. But no, absolutely not. That's not the answer. And, John Hopkins University agrees that's not the answer. A lot of very respectable institutions are totally against this. Right. Uh, well, as it turns out, they said, okay, we're taking her. We, the government, will take her. We will conduct this procedure. We will have her cut on and injected and sterilized because you're not, you're not complying with the wishes of the state. Let me get this straight. Christian parents are losing custody of their own children because the child was recruited by people that want to cut and sterilize her and right. turn her into a boy. And the government is not going to protect the parental rights. They're going to protect the child's rights to be uh, uh, liberated or what's the... Yeah, and, what? And, 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 and change their gender. And, and what's really sad is the majority of those who have gender change yeah. will not live to see their 30th birthday. I mean, think about it. This is worse than most cancer. Yeah. The, the, and the government is the one planting the tumor that is going to kill these children before the age of 30. And people on the other side will yeah. say, well, that's because uh, society's not embracing it. Oh no, 
the suicide rate and depression suicide rate is just as high in San Francisco, where it's accepted and embraced irresponsibly, as it is in other more conservative parts of the country. It's an internal issue. John Hopkins sees that, this, but unfortunately these social workers and, and the state of California doesn't, and our children are being led to slaughter by this. Now here's the good news. In, the, in this case, we stepped in, we represented the parents, and the judge in the end agreed to have the children, child put, brought back with the parents. Uh, but we see more and more of these happening, and they're going to be happening more and more across the country, uh, especially if things like the Equality Act become law. That's the legislation. We'll talk about that okay. in a second. But the good news is Christian parents can have legal representation and they get their kids back. This is Brad Dacus with PJI. He is winning these battles. More with him after this. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit? or from angels, or from invisible demons. I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill, and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life which is why we've created a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? We're offering a discount today. While supplies last, it used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a, a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an unreal world. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will, be in, will embrace it and move yeah. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-Obey-God or Write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We want to rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Brad Dacus of Pacific Justice Institute. Brad, you were talking about the battles you're winning in the courts of California, uh, but there's also this national legislation that Nancy Pelosi is pushing, the so-called Equality Act. Yeah, this is the greatest assault, legislative assault in U.S. history on religious freedom and parental rights. And let me tell you, tell you about this. Uh, it, would, it would basically shut down every Christian adoption agency in the country. Because it would tell them, um, we, you have to give these kids that came from abused families perhaps, foster kids, you have to be willing to give these kids to a same-sex couple, a transgender couple, engaged in a, a, a lifestyle, relationships, sexual acts that go totally against what you believe as a Christian organization, you have to put, give this little kid who's already been through a lot, you have to put them with a, with a, with a couple that goes against your beliefs. Well, that's going to shut them all down. Wow. Okay, that's just one. Second, uh, it tells the parents uh, who have a daughter in competition, athletic sports, oh, by the way, your daughter, she's going to have to uh, be willing to athletically compete with boys who join the girls' competition. And if that, that may cost her the winning, that may cost her scholarships to universities and college programs. Girls can't run as fast as boys sometimes. 
Uh, they could run faster than me, by the way. I'm pretty slow. But yes. but, <laughs> but when when these fast little boys compete in women's sports, then the girls lose their scholarships. Right. That's and not right. And it's not even running. It's also we're also talking about uh, wrestling, boxing, um, young girls yeah. uh, competing against boys, and boys have a skeleton skeleton advantage, muscle advantage, testosterone advantage, a number of advantages. So, uh, and it violates the whole principle of the Civil Rights Act of Title IX, where it's, it's to protect uh, the ability for girls to have an equal opportunity to engage in athletic competition. So uh, that's that under the Equality Act, women's right, young girls' rights to have an equal shot, equal opportunity for sports would be decimated. What's even worse though is what happens to churches and pastors and ministers. Uh, you know, we at Pacific Justice had a case like this in Wisconsin, DePere, Wisconsin, defending the rights of churches not to be forced to have to hire ministers engaging in sexual same-sex acts and, and relationships that violate their faith. We won that case. The Equality Act would institutionalize this kind of a mandate across the country against all churches, and they would be shut down inevitably if they did not comply with this. What's important, the Equality Act, people don't realize this, it's already passed the U.S. House. Yeah. It, it got the votes, the Democrats, they voted for this, they passed it, they have uh, a majority in the U.S. House. It's gone to the U.S. Senate. 46 senators have already, all Democrats have already signed off and says, we're gonna support this. Wow. And you know what they're waiting for? They're hoping to get enough new Senate seats and the White House this next election in November. Because if they do, this can become law and be implemented and trouncing the rights of parents and religious freedom across the United States in a massive level at a massive level that has never been seen in U.S. history, uh, it's, the stakes are very, very, very high. That's why we have a petition at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, the sign the petition at PrayInJesusName.org to stop the so-called Equality Act, used to be the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, ENDA. But if you sign that, we will fax it to up to 100 senators. There's a small fee, but we want you to get your voice heard in Washington, D.C. Okay, just a couple more minutes. Give us a pro-life update. A pro-life update. Well, uh, we at Pacific Justice do a lot of work uh, defending the, the pro-life movement. Uh, we had a, a major victory uh, this last year before the United States Supreme Court. Uh, we defended pro-life clinics from being forced by the state of California to have to advertise in their waiting room where women can get a free or low-cost abortion and the phone number to call. This was outrageous, compelling a nonprofit ministry to have to not just be silent, but actually to have to advertise and affirm something that goes totally against their purpose. Compelled which is, speech. Yeah, compelled speech. The Supreme Court saw it for what it was, struck it down as unconstitutional, and now we at Pacific Justice Institute have been able to work to liberate these pro-life clinics uh, and to make sure they have that, that protection. Uh, we, we right now see Planned Parenthood in California. They're now going out and, on, and planting themselves in high school and college campuses up and down the state of California with taxpayer money. Planned Parenthood probably one of the most hideous, evil organizations I've ever heard of. Uh, they're doing that. We at Pacific Justice, in fact, I love to sue Planned Parenthood. We, we, shut, we helped <laughs> to shoot down one of their clinics uh, in Northern California uh, not that long ago. But this is what they're doing. So if any girl is ever victimized, deceived, and injured because of uh, the, the, the doings and workings of Planned Parenthood, those parents should uh, contact us immediately for representation. Well, I'm impressed, and I'm also encouraged that the new Supreme Court, with Justice Gorsuch and Kavanaugh on, you know, maybe a 5-4 conservative majority, they've agreed to hear two new cases uh, that are that have pro-life implications. And maybe you're not involved in those, but I'm so excited that the Supreme Court is now uh, moving in in the direction of maybe give us giving us some some relief on this. Yeah, I, I'm very optimistic. But people need to remember, it's a bare five to four. If Justice Thomas had a, something happen to him, uh, it'd be back to four. And that's why it's so important that people vote in the next election. It's that simple. Uh, President Trump has done incredible work to put, to change the courts from the district court, circuit court, and Supreme Court level. Uh, but there's still so much to do. If we have a, another five years uh, with this president appointing more justices on the court that respect the Constitution, his justices are the purest justices ever appointed, I believe, in U.S. history that respect the Constitution, respect our civil liberties and our rights, our religious freedoms, parent parental rights. If he's able to do that, we're talking about an impact and a legacy lasting generations to come. Yeah. Because these ugly cases make their way up to court, 
we're, we at Pacific Justice Institute and others are able to set solid case law protecting our children, our churches, and religious freedom. So there's so much at stake this election. People got to vote. I'm told that still today, three out of four Christians do not vote. And that's just, oh. that's just wrong. Here's a problem. If, if, if a Christian, as Christians have stewardship. It's a right God's given us. He wants to be glorified in everything we do. Yeah. And the responsibility is on our hands. If we don't vote, then the blood of the unborn is on our hands. Wow. If we don't vote, then girls taken from parents and sterilized is on our hands. And it's also a love question. Um, if a church is truly filled with the love of Christ, yeah. it's gonna care about people outside their church walls. Love is not a theology, love is an action verb. And if we really care, we're going to vote. If we really care about those people, we're going to vote. It's a part of our testimony to the world around us. Right now the world sees us as being critical and not caring because we don't vote. This is an opportunity for us to live our faith like never before and to vote and people to see that our love, our caring is real and it's genuine. Thank you. Our guest has been Brad Dacus with PJI.org, Pacific Justice Institute. He is a Christian lawyer defending your rights pro bono. And I probably, I'm just guessing you need some donations there too. We greatly appreciate that. We're expanding across the United States, uh, taking on cases others won't. And we greatly appreciate that. If they go to our website, pji.org or pacificjustice.org, uh, and they can also sign up to get our, our Legal Insider newsletter, which will give them ongoing updates on cases that they will not hear about generally in mainstream media. Pacificjustice.org, free newsletter updates. I'm going to get that. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. I want to invite you to call us toll-free at 866-Obey-God. If you need prayer today, call us, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. But please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org to help us bring you these kind of interviews and these kind of important uh, news updates. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps. I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.